Welcome to Luke TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster, along with Andrew Murphy. Happy earnings week. Yesterday, big day, Apple reported. We've had now about a full 12 hours to let the results marinate with us. I um, was studying this closely. Andrew was studying it as well. I'm going to pass the baton to Andrew to walk us through, walk me through, walk us through the Apple results. Well, Gene, it's not every quarter that you get a clean sweep across every product category with beats across the board. But what stood out to you last night with Apple? The biggest thing that stood out was the stock reaction. And I see this disconnect between what the stock does is doing uh, more recently and what the fundamentals are. And obviously there is some just vortex going on in the markets today. You know, you, you pick the, the reason why there is pressure on the markets, but that to me was what really stood out. When I saw the numbers, I would have expected the stock to be up five plus percent. Instead, it's down slightly. And I think that's the piece that stood out. More importantly, it's about the fundamentals. And you know, we tend to overanalyze how stocks trade right after an earnings report and sometimes underappreciate what the earnings report means for the next three months. And I think uh, to really the substance of your question, what stood out there is that this business, Apple's business is clipping along on all cylinders. And it is because there is a digital accelerating digital transformation that's going on. And that is sustainable. What we saw in the December quarter, I think will continue to add momentum to the business over the next eight quarters. That was one piece that stood out. The second piece was they gave the metric about the active devices at 1.65 billion. Uh, that's up about 10% year over year. And I think that's an important longer term piece to keep in mind. Now, this isn't number of active users. This is active devices. Many people have multiple devices, but it is representative of a growing base, an increasing number of people that are using Apple's products. And I think that's important because the pattern has been pretty clear for the last 15 years. When people start to buy Apple products, they buy more Apple products, they continue to stay with the family. And I think that that is a sign that there's more reoccurring revenue coming down the road with some of this expanding base. And so those were the two things that really stood out to me. How about you? What jumped out to you? Well, let me ask a follow-up. You mentioned the accelerating digital transformation. Can you explain what you mean by that? You know, we know that the digital world has been a growing importance in our lives and obviously over the last nine months, it's become even more clear, but that accelerating digital transformation is all these paths that we're on. And typically they take many years for the paths to kind of play into the, the sweet spot of the growth curves, but we're seeing this step forward and Apple's benefiting from many of them. And the simple reason why they're benefiting, I mean, you pick the trend, whether it is learn or work from anywhere, whether it is uh, gaming, you could think about health and wellness, e-commerce, all these have one common factor is that to compute, to do these, you need hardware to do that. You need software on top of that. And obviously they add the services element. So this is pretty unique to uh, something that Apple can deliver. In other words, that this push forward that we're having related to how we use technology, Apple is essentially the window that we are seeing that through. That is the accelerating digital transformation. That's why Apple is gonna continue to benefit in the quarters to come. All right, that's close to what stood out to me in the, in the sense that I was just amazed at how well Apple has navigated the pandemic and the challenges that it poses to their employee base, uh, their customers, um, society at large. We are seeing unprecedented financial stresses on consumers around the world. And yet Apple is hitting record revenue on almost every product category in every geography. It's fascinating. And mm -hmm. I applaud the company in terms of how they've handled the pandemic, not just from a business standpoint, but from a cultural standpoint and how they've navigated uh, some of the challenges that we see in our world today that have nothing to do with technology and everything to do with technology because of the way we're using these devices in new and deeper ways. I'm guilty of glossing over that point. It is important because 
when you have a culture as strong, it comes from the top, uh, as strong as Apple's culture, to be able to do what they did in the circumstance is something that is important for long-term investors. Those are the type of companies that find their way to their destination and Apple's doing that. I'm glad that you mentioned that. I didn't appreciate it, but that's really important. One last question for you. How far can they ride this curve that they're growing into today? I think it's two years in part because I think this kind of reassessment that people are going to do around learn and work from anywhere, that's a positive tailwind for Mac and iPad. I think that the phone is going to have this three-year cycle around 5G. The carriers really haven't stepped up yet. They will. Speeds will improve. And I think consumers are going to get more excited about upgrading their phones. So I think if you put those two together, that's, I think, two years in the sweet spot. But this digital transformation is going to go on for a decade plus. I mean, we're just going to get more and more involved in it. And Apple is going to play a bigger and bigger role. Before we sign off, I did want to mention something that jumped out to me from the earnings call was this question, I believe it was from Katie Huberty. She talked about, you know, how do they think about addressable markets and potentially where they could go. And I want to caution is that my antenna went into the call looking for some evidence that they're going to be working on a car. And uh, Tim's response was uh, they want to do something that brings their hardware, software, and services together to create a great experience. And they really focus on that. In some ways, it's a, it's a non-answer. When you have biases going into that, is that, you're listening to it and you're looking for biases, maybe hear things that weren't intended to be heard, but I do think a car is a combination of hardware, software, and services. We have stopped just short of the goal line of saying that Apple's going to do a car. We've learned our lessons in the past. We'll keep working on it. I think that the leaning is towards doing a car. It's definitely not reflected in Apple's share price. We'll leave that optionality still on the table. And I'll wrap there. Great week for Apple. They've got the foundation to keep moving this higher, and we continue to see that path forward. So on behalf of the uh, moderator, I'm going to take the baton back here now, Andrew. On behalf of Andrew, Gene, and Loop TV, bye for now.